Hello survivors, I'm the survival this and welcome to the Hunter Classic. I wanted to bring back the hunting, well, another hunting game to the channel, and I actually got a comment asking a while ago if I could do the Hunter Classic. Now, I thought the Hunter Classic was still on a subscription service, but it's actually a free-to-play with a few, well, probably some tweaks I have to discover as I actually play, but I love, this is exactly what drew me into the Hunter was the Classic version. Like, before Call of the Wild, this was, like, how the Hunter was. And one of the things I love is classic Red Feather Falls. This was probably my favorite map on the, uh, well, just in general for the Hunter. So I wanted to come back into it, see what it's like after all these years, because I haven't played for, I don't even know how many years. I think I stopped playing just as a map called Timbergold Trails was put out. But it's been a long time since I've played. Actually, you know what? I should also see exactly what I have equipped right now. Like, I have a fairly extensive inventory of things. I know I have... Yeah, like, I've got... The Cableback Bow was one weapon I want to try to get better with. I got 300 bolt action. I just can't remember... If there was a way of checking what was good for where. Or, like, what ammo was good for what animals. I don't know if there's actually anything in-game that you could do for that. See, yeah, nothing I can really see right off the bat. It's one of the things that I wish they would just, like, properly implement is a proper, like, chart to... In the store, they have it properly set up there. Where you basically just go into the store for the Hunter Classic, and it gives you actually, like, a big chart of this ammo type... Against this animal, is it ethical? Yes or no. It's very nice, and it really just sums up what you can use to hunt what things properly. Unfortunately, though, I do not believe the game actually has it in-game to find out, to know for sure. But it does have things like archery range, which is what I want to start with, just to see if I can kind of get a handle on how the cable backbow works. And then we'll head off and just do some more exploring, and I'm just going to live through a little bit of nostalgia for how much I played this game. Yeah, so I think this one... Actually, maybe Call of the Wild will help me here, because I think I'm more... Just going to get familiar with using more instinct aiming. Like, okay, well I say that, and that was a pretty bungled up one. Let me take a look. Yeah, that's pretty high on the thing. So instinct aiming is going to work. I just... You know, funnily enough, I think if I didn't try adjusting my aim like I had there... Because I thought I was aiming too low. But no, it might just be... Wait, that was a body? No, that... Was that actually a body right there? I thought that would have been a lung. I don't know, that seems kind of more like lung to me. I'm going to try that again. Really? I thought that would have been lung for sure. Maybe I'm just too far forward. No, that was definitely body. I know that one. But there were, there are a few kind of like quirks. Okay, there we go. Left lung and... Wow, that was actually a good shot. <laughs> There are some weird quirks with the Hunter Classic, though. One of them being how they did your progression system. Like, I can't actually show this stuff in-game because it's actually through, like, the website in a way. You can actually get the Hunter Classic on Steam, which then boots up a launcher for it, but, like... Oh, lordy, that... Okay, yeah, so the Cable Backbow is definitely only for, like, up-close stuff. Oh. Because the wind will really take some of your shots. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I won't use the... Actually, I thought... Okay, yeah, Q is the auto lock. And then caps lock... No, caps lock is it? Okay, then... How the heck do you run, then? Oh, C... Although, truthfully, your run isn't exactly all that fast. 
Yeah, so this is a lot of nostalgia, me coming back to and relearning stuff. It does show its age a little bit, but there are some things that the Hunter Classic has done much better, in my opinion, than uh, Call of the Wild. One of them is when you're actually, like, you've taken down an animal. There's some really cool stuff you can do in the Hunter Classic. I think what I'm going to do... Uh, maybe I'll try taking out the bullpup there. Like, you do have to use... There is a fair amount of, like, uh... Microtransactions. So they are something you will definitely be putting up with if you do try out the Hunter Classic. No, I don't think I'll bring that. I do want to try bringing a boat. Wait, is that the heavy... Oh, I didn't think I actually had that. Although I do got to admit, one nice thing... Is that it does almost like auto set up things for you, so like... I, okay, well I thought... You know, here, let me put that there, and then that's there. So those are... What are... Recurve arrow standard broadhead, okay. So I'll take a couple of those. Ammo is finite now. If you had a subscription, or I think you can actually still sign up for a subscription. Yeah, let's get that, and we'll get... Um, I guess we'll get that. You can still subscribe for, like, premium service, which will give you unlimited ammo for your weapons as you go out. I don't think it's a very... It's not an expensive subscription service. Oh, excuse me. And there is, like, a package deal where... You can get, like, a bunch of equipment and the subscription for service, so you can get yourself pretty stocked out easy or stocked up easily for stuff, but man, to come back here after all these years is just re nope. Oh. Camo view? What this Oh, that's right, there's actually little games for the hunter mate. I forgot about like there's stuff I'm going to definitely be discovering and I know the game actually I know there are still events ongoing, and I think there are even maybe some updates happening to the Hunter Classic. I don't entirely know. Again, it's almost like I'm coming back to this after some years away. I mean, I literally am, actually. But one of the things for where there's a big difference was, again, back into the level system. You don't actually have a real level as a hunter. You have levels dependent on the animals and the gear. It's like every animal has a tracking skill and a spotting skill. Every weapon has a level to it. And for weapons, it can be very, very difficult to start with a new weapon. Because there's not like, oh, all your rifles are under a rifle level. It'd be kind of nice if they were, because then you don't have to level 20 different freaking rifles just to get them up to a state where they aren't super, like, wobbly. Like, let's take example with the bullpup, or the bullpup here. Like, you can see, that is all over the place. But now let me show you what it's like with the 300 here. Still there, but it seems a little more controlled, doesn't it? That's kind of the difference, is... Oh. Okay, I actually got a call from a whitetail, so... The, the females did actually serve a good purpose for the game more than the hunter Call of the Wild, because in this version, they're basically your target practice to try to get your levels up to make it easier to hunt stuff. It can be very hard to hunt with the weapons, just being at level 1 because of how, like, wobbly they are and difficult they are to hone in. Actually, I should check and see, what calls do I have? Oh, there we go. An elk and a deer call. Those are actually pretty good to get. Probably should have checked that before I left the lodge, but again, this is a lot of nostalgia trip, and I just needed something to start doing again for Sundays. I want to show off the Hunter Classic a bit because, again, it is free to play. Microtransactions can still be a bit heavy-handed at times, I'm guessing, but... It all depends on what you're looking for, really. The big thing I want to show off, and if we can get the uh, the dough up ahead, wherever it is... Okay, I am crouched down. It's actually kind of... Well, hard to tell. Although I think I actually care... I feel like that's more of a the Call of the Wild feature than in the base hunter. Because you can actually go through, like, standing, crouch, and then prone. No, well, apparently it's just right in front of us somewhere. 
Yeah, I can't zoom in. But I can see another big thing, too, is on the hunter mate. You have a much more clear indication of where calls are going to be coming from. Like, in some ways, it's improved from Call of the Wild. In other ways, it is uh, a bit more tricky. Like, my guess is maybe she's... Right down in the reeds there. But if we can... It shouldn't be too hard to take her down. I just have to hope I'm alright enough with the bull pulp to, or the bull pup to do this. Again, I don't understand why it's so hard just to get the, like, compatibility chart in-game. So you don't have to have, like, a second... Basically, don't have to go to a second monitor or minimize and go back and forth of, okay, where does this line up with this animal I want to hunt after? Like, a big thing I always have is all your information for a game should be found in that game. If it's not, it's... Oh. Okay, so it sounds like she's more around here somewhere. Oh, there she is. Yeah, not too far off at all. I'm just going to crawl over here a bit. Oh, get our... There we go. That should have been a nice hard shot. And just reload, and now we're going to get to show off probably the biggest draw Call of the Wild... or er, the Hunter Classic has over Call of the Wild. So well, let's just... The trophy shot. This is something that the Call of the Wild doesn't have... Oh my god, what do I even look like as a... I'm like some kind of weird Canadian crocodile Dundee. <laughs> but you can do, like, manipulate where your character is, change their direction. Um, Actually, let me... Yeah, like, look at all the options on the right-hand side there. Let me see, I have a way of... You need to be unarmed or equipped with a weapon. Okay, and then, yeah, so then you can actually pull out your gear for it. Yeah, like, look at... See, this is where I wish Call of the Wild would bring this in, because you could do a lot of stuff here. When it comes to hunting. And then you have also like a ragdoll feature. So if you've ever seen like the hunter with weird pictures of all kinds of stuff going on. Ooh, this is how you can kind of see they come into being. I, I'm i really surprised that this feature was like taken out of. That's actually kind of funny one right there, isn't it? Let's even get a nice little pose with us and her. Oh, where are you? Okay, what else is there? Um, I'm not going to do any animal... Oh, there are actually animal poses? Okay, that's interesting. So let's do... I just want to see if I can maybe... Come on, slide you here. And we're dancing. There we go. Yeah, I don't think I have an up or down, unfortunately. I just have, like, zoom in and out, but... And then you can accept this card. Oh, you actually have filters as well. Old timey, uh, sepia, black and white, chroma. Oh, actually, they have their names up at the top. My bad. Centennial, Da Vinci, Salt and Pepper, Chroma, Shadows, Warmth. Warmth is kind of awful. Ah, Glacier. Right, not exactly good, but it is the opposite. And no filter. Although, for some reason, the motion sensitivity seems really, really. Oh. Now this is interesting. I've never encountered this before. Taxonomize for 10 M or just sell. So I guess if you want to save the trophies, you can. So it does have its own like uh, trophy system you can display like Call of the Wild does. Well, that's interesting to know. But yeah, as you saw on the Hunter Mate, I think as you get higher with the call proficiency, that, like, beacon that kind of sounds out, 
actually shrinks down so you get even more pinpointing of where the call came from. Oh man, I'm down just ice cubes. I really hate the heat. <laughs> I'm going to uh, just go for a bit longer, and yeah, it is fantastic. To, it is actually a really good feeling to be back in the Hunter Classic. Like, the weapon variety is quite a bit bigger. I do admit Call of the Wild, I think, is still my preferred version. Just because you don't have microtransactions as heavy, you don't have to grind every single weapon caliber, and even certain types of the same caliber up. It just kind of felt like a better put-together experience, whereas this one is a lot more like bits and pieces kind of getting bolted and screwed on, and like a more mishmash in a way. I still do want to see that trophy shot feature come into uh, Call of the Wild, but I don't think we'll actually ever see it. Let's see what we got here, though, because this is another thing, is that the tracking system was a little bit, actually quite a bit different back in these days. Like, so yeah, this is Roosevelt Elk, and you can see it has a cone of travel, but it's as, we, as we're going to follow over these more, you're going to see something pretty interesting with them. Ah, uh, yeah, and then you have new trail... Mission, prove yourself tracks. Oh, that's right, I have a mission to do for something. Okay, yeah, so, no, I keep pressing, I gotta remember, it's not G, it's Q. Now I can find one more track that should actually give us how the tracking features and systems in Classic, far superior than Call of the Wild, in my opinion. Because I think it's you need three tracks of the same animal, but right now these are a lot of repeating tracks. Although, truthfully, I do see one problem, and you can't actually see what kind of tracks they are just on the ground. You have to select them all. But this should be the third track here. Yeah, and there you go. Now this is where the tracking system was really nice. It gave you that large outer circle as like the distance it could travel since the track was left, and the cone of direction with it. So you actually had good ways of pinpointing... Oh, there we go, now I can see some tracks. You had better ways of being able to pinpoint exactly how far the animal might be from where you last picked up a track from it. And depending on time frame, that dotted circle around in the little mini-map there tells you that it's probably past that. But if that's a solid line, you know it should be within that radius of... Ooh. That'd be nice to find, actually. So, let me get my caller out. No, oh, is that... No, that's not the right one. That's not it. That's it. Oh. Bugling out in Redfeather Falls. I love this. And I do see a little bit of stuff going on up there. Oh, wow, that's quite the herd, actually. Surprised how many males are actually in that compared to, the, like, the female. Usually the game seems to have almost like a bachelor herd and just a female herd system. And I think... Actually, that first one looks like it might be a special one, given the coloration to it. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Cause see if we can maybe bring a mint. Ooh, that one back there looks like it's a nice scoring one. Oh, and there's still. Yeah, you out there. Well, for some reason, I'm not quite able to. Sp oh, that. A okay, there are some nice looking ones up there. Like, you're a good one, and so is this. I think that one there. It's just hard to see right now because of how it is with the trees. Oh, no, that's right. I need to... It's four that I gotta use. Okay, one problem is, though, it still feels like when you do go into your uh, prone position, super, super close to the ground so you can't actually see anything. Well, the one thing that is different is you actually don't get a wind indicator. I think you have to use, like, the direction the leaves are blowing for that. 
you actually have an item called Wind Indicator, which is basically like a little spray can that just puffs out a bit of smoke so you can see the direction. Oh, that's right, this might actually be... Oh, man. Okay, that one actually looks like a fantastic scoring one there. It's probably going to be hard to actually, like, get a... Oh, see, you are another really nice-looking one. Oh, I think... No, where are you guys going? No, 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 come back. Yeah, I think she's kind of curious. Yeah, she's trying to watch us. I want to try to get these guys in again, because no ours, those are some very nice looking elk there. I'll probably only really be able to get one this episode, and that is kind of the problem with the Hunter. I think it's a great streaming series, or a great game to stream, but for video's sake, because of, well, just the time constraints you more have with them, you can't really pull off hunts too easily. See, unfortunately, I'm not getting any idea what... Oh, there we go. Ooh, 205 to 375. Yeah, that's pretty good. Anything better than 300 is a pretty good trophy for an elk. I'm going to take you, and that's going to send everybody off, but now this is... Ooh. Actually, I'm surprised that... Although those might just be the females, so that might not hurt... I might have even actually split them up. That would work out well, because if this is all the males now stuck on this side, it might be easy to get them in without having a female, like, accidentally giving us away from getting too close. Okay, now let's take a look at you, because you are a pretty good-looking specimen right here. Look at the rack on that. What do you score? 300? 317, that is a very nice one. And again, it's... Okay, let me just get help again. Okay, so I'll probably keep the bull pulp for the animal. Okay, for some reason, though, I can't seem to have... It says P for Trophy Animal Pose, but for some reason, I can't seem to actually have it pose off for us. Okay, well, let's slide me over there. Bring myself around, and is there... You know, let's go for humble. I admit the hat definitely goes a little low to be able to see my eyes, but let's keep him front and center. What's going on? Ah, oh, yeah. See, I wish I could like lift and drop the camera, but this is. This is the big draw for me for the Hunter, is you can actually get some really nice shots like these. Okay, uh, Shadows, Chroma... Ah, Chroma actually doesn't look too bad. So I think I'll go for Chroma on that. Except... Oh! So you can actually earn in-game mon... So GM is the money you use to buy things like ammo, weapons... Actually, I'm not even sure if weapons, you might be able to with wep with it, but... So you can actually earn GM just from hunting and... Okay, I think the hunter is definitely uh, worth another check with it now, these systems in place. I'd have to check if you can actually buy weapons, but now that I know you can buy ammo just from hunting and continuing to do so... Oh yeah, this is... This is changing it a lot. Oh, actually, is there something over there? There is. Looks like just an elk, though. Yeah, I think that's just one of the females that got scared off because of the shot we took. 
But yeah, I gotta admit, coming back to Hunter Classic and now seeing that's how it kind of integrated some of its stuff, I'm digging it. I'm really digging it. I s I'll have to double check in the store and maybe next week I'll have some more answers for you guys just regards to how some of the systems are, but it might be worth checking out the Hunter Classic if you are curious or you do want more of a multiplayer experience with some screenshots to save. I hope Call of the Wild does figure out a way to bring in the trophy shot system, but until then, yeah, Classic really had it nailed. Um, you know, I think I might just... I doubt I'm really going to be able to find those elk, given the shot that I took, but... Oh, never mind. I mean, it is kind of cheap, but... Oh, no, he got fixed. I was going to say, I was going to take a shot right off on him there, but... Of course, leave it to when you're actually getting ready to make use of that little bug that they get out of that. Surprisingly enough, that actually happens a lot less in the Hunter Classic than Call of the Wild, so... It's weird. This older one seems more polished than the newer one, in a way. Again, it's an interesting mix between the two, but I still think Call of the Wild, just because it's not as microtransaction heavy. Like, if you want to get new weapons or that, you can mostly unlock quite a variety just playing the base game of Call of the Wild. The Hunter Classic here, I'm not so sure of. I think you are going to probably have to look at uh, buying using, like, microtransactions for new weapons and stuff. But, I mean, it might have changed since, so hard to say. They definitely fill two very similar roles, but you might have different experiences with them. This Hunter Classic is generally seen more as the Hunter Sim compared to the two, whereas Call of the Wild is more of, like, an arcade one. So if you're looking for more of, like, hardcore hunting, this is probably the one you'll want to take a bit more interest in. I think Call of the Wild does work better for, like, I like YouTube videos, just because with its style being more for arcade, you have more action and just stuff going on in the series. Like, he's a ways out, but I might actually be able to get him. You know, I think I'm going to be able to get him. Oh, no. No, I'm going to have to approach and probably get into prone position. Because of the sway on the bull pulp, or the bull pop I'm using. And again, the only way to really reduce that is just practice to keep using it more. Yeah, there we go. And I think Call of the Wild is also actually really helped me hone in my accuracy for, like, going for these heart shots. Well, that maybe even the Carnivore series, because with them having so many, like, focusing much more on the Mortal Zone to really, really want to hit them, you really, I guess, carry that over to other games as well. I'm just going to run our way over, get another trophy shot with this guy, and probably sell him, and that'll be the end of this episode. It's nice to come back to the Hunter Classic. I don't know how long of a series I'll do with it, just because, again, the hunting games are a good stream where you have a few hours you can put into it, but if it's just, like, 30 minutes, it's kind of hard to get a really nice hunt in on that time. We'll see how you are, because I think this was the other really big guy from the herd when we were looking from a distance. Another nice thing, too, is... These hunting towers, you don't have to, like, spend money. They are just pre-existing structures you can use. So that's a nice feature as well. Okay, what are you at? Okay, not as good as the other one, but still a nice one. I wonder, maybe I have... Maybe that's only once you, like, taxidermize it can you get the poses for the animal. Alright, let's get the bull pelt. Or bullpup out. Serene. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Serene kind of works nicely if we can get into a good position with the rifle. I just want to get the full... Yeah, there we go. And maybe I'll try that chroma filter again. 
Um, actually, maybe not, because all it really seems to do is super bring out the blood that's over there. Eh, you know what, we'll keep Chroma and use that, so we'll accept. And yeah, so... We need own trophy lodge to display it, so I can taxidermize it. I EM bucks, or M bucks, I think, are your cash for their currency, and the GM is for, like, game money. But we'll just sell. And with that, I think I will end this episode of The Hunter Call of the Wild right here. Thank you guys very much for joining me on this little first entry of this possible series. If you want to see more, be sure to let me know in the comments right down below. Again, I'm just trying to figure out what series to put on the channel, and because this is a nostalgia trip, I thought I'd do it for maybe a video or two, see what you guys are reaction-wise to it, and how it'll go from there. But for now, this was a nice little trip into The Hunter, just its other entry. So, let me see. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give us a like, any comments, tips, tricks, be sure to leave them in the comments right down below. No, oh, excuse me. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, maybe think about doing so if you could. I'm still trying to build us up to that 500 sub mark, and then streaming is probably going to happen after we hit 1,000. Quite a ways off, but maybe something will change and the algorithm will bless me from the heavens and the channel will grow from something like that. Until I see you in the next video, survivors, please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.